Thanks everyone for coming along. Um, my name is Sarah McDonald. I'm a PhD student at the University of Melbourne. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about some of my PhD research, which looks at metal contaminants in urban stormwater runoff. So anthropogenic activities associated um, with urbanisation have increased the presence of a diverse range of pollutants in urban waterways. Uh, often these pollutants are delivered into water via stormwater runoff following rainfall. Um, and so consequently, stormwater runoff has been identified as a major source um, of pollution in urban waterways. So among the pollutants in, present in stormwater, metals continue to be identified as a priority. And this is due to their ubiquity, uh, their legacy, um, and their ability to be taken up by and cause harm to animals. So monitoring of uh, urban stormwater runoff has revealed that these discharges uh, into receiving water bodies tend to occur short-term pulses. So in this diagram here um, is an illustration of that where I've got rainfall um, indicated by these blue bars and then the discharge um, of stormwater either into an urban stream or a forested stream um, is presented with this dashed or this um, black line where in the urban stream we see this really um, typical flashy pulse response, whereas in the forested stream, it's much more smoothed out and it's a longer exposure period. So as a consequence, animals that live in these urban environments tend to be exposed to these intermittent um, and short-term pulses of metals at really high concentrations. So regulators in these environments rely on water quality guideline values to set enforceable limits. Um, and these guideline values are typically derived from continuous toxicity tests. Um, so these are tests uh, undertaken in a lab environment where animals are exposed to either a single metal or a very um, simple metal mixture over a, about a 96 hour period, so five days. So in the context of stormwater runoff, these water quality guidelines may not be protective enough for animals during these short-term discharge events. So currently there's this need for water quality guidelines for short-term pulse contaminant discharges um, in urban systems. And my research is really geared towards identifying the level of risk that urban stormwater poses um, and also the resulting impact that these um, multiple pulse exposures have on animals that um, live in these urban waterways. Um, so first thing was first, um, I set out to understand the nature of stormwater runoff. Um, so my chosen creek system was the Mooney Ponds Creek. And this is basically a glorified drain which runs north to south and enters the Yarra River um, at Docklands. So stormwater is really dynamic and the concentrations and types of contaminants in stormwater can change on a minute to minute basis. And this required a really effective and comprehensive sampling regime. Um, so I collected samples in this creek system before, during and after a storm. Um, I used a grab sampling approach, which is just a bottle on a stick. Um, I also created rising stage samplers, which are able to collect water samples as the river levels rise during the storm. And I also deployed passive sampling devices. Um, so these were put in the stream for the entire storm period, and they're able to give me a concentration of the metal through time. So from this comprehensive regime, I was able to build a really detailed picture of stream dynamics over the storm. Um, if we think back to the diagram I presented to you before of the urban versus forested streams, we can see here that I get this really typical urban um, peak of um, stormwater discharge uh, during the storm. Um, I also want to investigate uh, the dissolved metal concentration during the storm. So dissolved metals are metals that are present in the water column and they're not attached to particulates or sediments. And we can see here for the dissolved metals, we also get this really um, typical peak during this storm period. So uh, I wanted to compare the concentrations that I found to the current water quality guidelines that I was talking about before. Um, so in each of these graphs, these guidelines are, are represented by this dashed line. Um, and so comparing my results to these guidelines allowed me to identify six key metals that exceeded these uh, guideline values either during the storm or also during baseline sampling. Um, and so my six key metals that I identified was aluminium, cadmium, cobalt, copper, lead and zinc. Further investigations I wanted to undertake was to look at the risk that these elevated concentrations pose to aquatic animals. Uh, so to do that, I wanted to measure the portion of metals that were specifically available for animals to take up into their bodies. 
So to do this, I use the passive sampling devices that I talked about before. Um, these are able to selectively bind for these metals that are just available to animals. So looking at my passive samplers results, um, I found that collectively among my six key metals, before, during and after the storm, only about 2% um, of the total dissolved metal concentration was available for organisms to take up. And this is really great news as even though dissolved metal concentrations were above these guidelines, uh, the portion of metal that was available for organisms to take up was minimal and it therefore poses uh, little risk. So however, there's this uh, still this outstanding issue as to the impact that these short-term repeated exposures have on animals um, that live in our urban waterways. And so I went on to address this with some other studies where I chose two species, um, a freshwater shrimp and a fish species, and I exposed these animals to uh, metal pulses uh, replicating what I saw in the storm in the lab environment. So I chose two key metal pollutants, cadmium and zinc, um, and I wanted to look at how the animals take up these metals over these pulse exposures, uh, where the metals went, um, and if there was any preferences for uh, the route of uptake, uh, whether that's through diet or through the surrounding water. So looking at the shrimp first, uh, for these graphs, I've got my two metals, cadmium and zinc, where um, on the y-axis is the concentration of the metal, um, and then this is the time. So over the three pulses, which is uh, illustrated here with the shaded bars, we can see that um, the shrimp take up both cadmium and zinc during this pulsed exposure period, where during the depuration period, which is uh, the period of time where the animals in clean water, so there's no metals, uh, cadmium was retained by the shrimp, but it was um, expelled, uh, zinc was expelled. Looking at the fish, I exposed them to the exact same regime as the shrimp, but I found that there was no uptake from water. And this led me to hypothesize that potentially diet was the major pathway in this animal. So I fed the fish, both cadmium and zinc spiked food sources, where after feeding, the metal was expelled rapidly as it moved through the digestive system of the animal. And both cadmium and zinc were retained um, by the animal, about 15% of the total amount that the animals ate. So both these studies really highlight the differences between two species in their preferences for um, taking up metals from the environment. So looking at where the metals went in the animals, um, metals were accumulated or taken up um, at the site of uptake. So in the shrimp, this was the gills. Uh, in the fish, it was the stomach and the intestine because it ate the food source. And we also found metals um, in the major detoxifying organ of these animals. So for the shrimp, it's a hepatopancreas, it's a liver-like organ, uh, and in the shrimp, uh, in the fish, it was the liver. So all in all, uh, the monitoring and assessment of stormwater runoff requires appropriate guidelines, um, where the research that I undertook has provided insight into the nature of metals in stormwater runoff. Um, and the pulse exposure studies uh, highlighted the importance of considering species-specific responses uh, to the different routes of exposure um, when we go on to derive these guidelines. Um, my work showed that uh, stormwater, uh, metals in stormwater were detected above these guideline values, however, they posed minimal risks to animals. Um, the data I collected in my studies can be used to modify guidelines, where in practice, we're able to relax guidelines um, by a factor to achieve a protective, but not overly conservative result. Um, just some thank yous. Um, I'd like to thank my two supervisors or three supervisors. Um, so Catherine Hassel, Tom Cresswell and Professor Michael Keogh. Um, I had a lot of support through ANSI, which is the Australian Institute of Nuclear Science and Engineering. Um, they're a partner with ANSTO, where I undertook quite a lot of my um, fish and shrimp work. Uh, also the Ecological Society and, of course, thanks to the Royal Society of Victoria for the opportunity to talk to you all today. Thank you.